Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is not a happy one. None of them on this channel really are, but there is an update on the Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell case with the missing children, JJ and Tylee. If you haven't been following all of what's happened, I'll link everything down below, but essentially the children have been missing, the parents have been acting suspiciously, and now we have news about what actually transpired to some small degree. So here there's an article that says, remains found on Idaho property are Lori Vallow's missing children, family says Chad Daybell charged. The relatives of cult mom Lori Vallow's missing children made the grim announcement Wednesday that remains found on an Idaho property this week were the children Joshua J.J. Vallow, seven, and Tylee Ryan, 17. The police arrested Chad Daybell, Vallow's husband, and the writer of more than a dozen self-published doomsday novels on Tuesday after finding human remains on his property. He faced felony counts of destroying and concealing evidence. A judge set his bail at $1 million on Wednesday. Vallow, the so-called cult mom, was the mother of both missing children. JJ's remains were amongst those found on Daybell's property. His grandmother, Kay Woodcock, told Fox 10 Phoenix Wednesday before the children's relatives in the Woodcock and Ryan families released a joint statement said Tylee's remains were discovered there as well. So I don't think any of us are unfortunately surprised. I think most of us had come to this grim conclusion conclusion a while ago because parents who act that disinterested in their missing children might indicate that there's something more or like they already know what happened to their children. I'm not surprised that their bodies were found on, you know, Chad Daybell's own property. What I am surprised about is how come it took this long? Wouldn't looking at the property of Daybell and Vallow be one of the first places you'd look? Like, it's obviously not a smart place to hide any bodies if you're hoping to get away with it, but nonetheless, they should have checked there first, so I'm kind of confused as to why it took this long, and maybe there's some judicial shit that I'm not aware of, but nonetheless. Rexburg police confirmed they found two sets on Daybell's property during a search Tuesday. Rob Wood, the special prosecutor handling the case, said investigators found the concealment of at least one of the bodies to be particularly egregious, Fox 10 Justin Lum reported. Daybell and Vallow were married in November 2019, a month after Chad Daybell's previous wife, Tammy Daybell, died at home. The family reportedly declined an autopsy before her burial in Utah. The children were first reported missing by their grandparents a month before that. So this is future me. I found this article on Thursday. I'll be posting this on Friday. So this is the newest information I can include. And it says, in court records, Madison County Prosecutor Rob Wood said he believes Chad Daybell either concealed or helped hide the remains, knowing that they were about to be used as evidence in court. Wood said the first body was hidden or destroyed sometime on or after September 8th, the last known day that Tylee was seen, and the second on or after September 22nd, the last known day that JJ was seen. A document that details the reasons behind the charges was sealed after Wood said it could compromise the criminal investigation. The prosecutor also noted how much media attention the case has received and said keeping documents secret would preserve Daybell's right to a fair trial. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, another aspect that I've discussed about this case prior is what happened to Chad Daybell's prior wife. Because if you haven't seen the rest, she died under what I would call very suspicious circumstances. She was healthy. She was, I believe, 40 years old and she happened to just die in her sleep. Her husband declined an autopsy and I believe the funeral was like two days after, like it was very quickly kind of pushed away, which to me in and of itself is very suspicious. So I'm also wondering, since now they have reason to be particularly suspicious of Daybell as they found the remains on his property, whether they're actually gonna go forward, because I remember they exhumed his ex-wife, but now I'm wondering how much further are they gonna bring that in terms of the autopsy and seeing if there was some foul play there too, because it wouldn't be surprising considering, I say this every time, but these two individuals, Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell, death just follows them. So I'm wondering if they're the death they're the killers, really, and I mean, yeah, I think they are, pretty obviously. So if you don't mind, I want to briefly pause here for a second, because anytime I say that this family is surrounded by death, I think most of us realize it, but I think seeing a visual of how actually surrounded by death they are is very important, because it underlines the fact that they should have been 
more heavily investigated, in my opinion, from the get-go. Like I said, if there are legal things that were in the way, that is what it is. But if we look at it, Charles Vallow deceased due to Alex Cox. Alex Cox is deceased due to natural circumstances, apparently. Chad Daybell's ex-wife, Tammy Daybell, deceased under suspicious circumstances because she just died in her sleep at 40 and nobody really asked questions. Chad surely didn't. And then now we have two children who are also deceased. And the two central people in all of this are consistently Lori and Chad. So I don't know how there's any real question here as to any sort of guilt on their part. It's clear. A local investigation grew into an interstate that attracted global attention as details continue to emerge. The short span between Tammy Daybell's death and the Chad Daybell's new marriage initially raised suspicions, as it would. So then, as I said, she's been exhumed and the results of the ensuing autopsy have not been publicly released. And then they go through all the deaths that have occurred, which we've already discussed. This is a thing that we also need to remember is Charles Vallow had filed for divorce from his wife, claiming he was afraid she might kill him and that she held apocalyptic beliefs according to the outlet, including that she was a god assigned to carry out the work of the 144,000 at Christ's second coming in July 2020. The 144,000 number appears in the Bible and has varying religious significance among different Christian groups. So as of now, that's all that's really out there. Sadly, I don't think any of us are surprised, but more than anything, I'm wondering how this timeline evolved so slowly because you'd think as soon as the children went missing, the first thing the police would want to do is you know, investigate the premises where the children lived or the premises the children visited. So I don't know if there was some kind of law barrier in the way. I'm not glad that the children died, obviously, but I'm glad that the bodies were found. So then hopefully both Lori and Chad can really be brought to justice because until now they've just been on fucking vacation. They've been in Hawaii chilling like nothing's wrong. So I hope that this finally puts the pressure there to have these people brought to justice because killing children, you guys know, any crime against children for me is just, I mean, there's never any excuse for any murder really unless it's self-defense, but especially children being murdered, I just don't know how you can get to that point. And as we've discussed, Lori Vallow held extremely esoteric beliefs to put it in one way. And I'll link a prior video where, you know, she was claiming that children could be like zombies essentially who are possessed and who therefore need to be like removed from earth and therefore killed and I don't know if that's their own way of trying to justify murdering or if they actually believe that. Ian says when he first met Chad and Lori, he didn't get a bad impression, but they seemed quote unquote different. He describes learning of these new religious beliefs as fun and exciting ideas, but many of them felt like they were ripped straight out of a Dungeons and Dragons manual. So let's pause here for a second because I feel like there's such an overload of information. So part of what makes Lori Vallow suspicious, aside from the fact that she's not helping the police look for her missing children, are her religious beliefs that are esoteric to say the least. So between thinking she's the second coming of Christ, now we can maybe think that she believes this zombie dark beings thing as well. It's concerning because it makes me think, did she delude herself into thinking that maybe one or both of her kids were dark beings or maybe they were zombies that needed to be eradicated? That's where my brain is going right now. But considering all the weird shit that surrounds this couple in terms of death, in terms of beliefs, in terms of also not even just death, but suspicious death, I just hope that this case is closed properly and actually getting justice for those two children because they did not deserve any of this, obviously. And it's just so disgusting to me that, I mean, it's clear that they're in some way cold-blooded killers because if you're not, you wouldn't just go to Hawaii and be on vacation and be just like chilling while your children are nowhere to be found and the authorities are even like, where the fuck are your kids? So obviously I have no empathy, no compassion, no positive feeling towards these two parents because they seem like massive pieces of shit and that's all there is to it. You can let me know what you think in the comments down below as to what exactly happened. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always and I'll catch you guys next time.